now we are ready to learn how to obtain the transfer function. The transfer function may be obtained using one of three commonly used methods. So there are three commonly used methods to get or to evaluate the transfer function. In the first method, the transfer function is obtained directly from the differential equation. For example, if we have a system, as shown here, where the input signal is defined as x of t and the output signal is defined as y of t, and let's say that the system is described by this differential equation, the third derivative of the output plus three times the second derivative of the output plus two times the first derivative of the output plus five times the output will equal to three times the first derivative of the input plus seven times the input itself. So note that the differential equation is organized in the normalized form where all the output derivative terms are placed on the left hand side of the equation and the input derivative terms are placed on the right hand side of the equation. Then obtaining the transfer function is very easy. The transfer function for this kind of differential equation is going to be a rational function where the output terms will be in the denominator and the input terms will be on the numerator. And what we need to do is we need to replace every nth derivative term with s to the n. Then we can say that h of s, that is the transfer function, will equal to, and now we will go to the denominator terms which will contain the derivatives of the output terms. So the first derivative we have in the output is the third order. So the third order derivative becomes s to the power of 3 in the denominator. The second term of the output is plus 3 times the second derivative. Then we come to the denominator and we replace it with plus 3 times s squared. The next term will be 2 times the first derivative of the output. This becomes plus 2 times s. And the 5y of t becomes plus 5 because it is the zeroth derivative. s to the 0 is 1. Then it becomes plus 5. Now the numerator will have the input terms. So the first term we have is the 3 dx dt. This term becomes in the numerator 3 times s because it is the first derivative. And then the 7x of t becomes plus 7. So this is the transfer function of the system, folks. It is very easily obtained from the differential equation. You put the output terms in the denominator, the input terms in the numerator, and then you replace the nth derivative by s to the n. So it isn't that difficult at all. Now let's show you the reverse process. So if we have the transfer function, can we obtain the differential equation? The answer is yes. You just mimic the reversed process of what we did earlier. So let's show you that through example. In this example, we have h of s equals to 4s plus 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2. The denominator part of the transfer function becomes the output derivative terms. So we can state that the differential equation will equal to, we have s squared here, so this becomes the second derivative of the output, plus, because we have 3 plus s here, it becomes plus 3 times dy dt, and then we have plus 2, that becomes plus 2yt. So as you can see here, we took the denominator part, and we made it the output derivative terms, and we replaced s to the n, by the nth derivative of the output. Those output derivative terms will equal to the input derivative terms which comes from the numerator. 
So in the numerator, we have 4s plus 1, so that becomes 4 dx dt plus x of t. What we said so far is that if you have a differential equation that describes the output-input relationship of the system, then we can easily obtain the transfer function. Or, if you have the transfer function, then you can easily obtain the differential equation that describes the output-input relationship. Very easy process. So, we can generalize this concept. So, we say that, in general, if we have a differential equation with nth order inputs and mth order outputs, then the transfer function will be a rational function where the denominator will be an nth order polynomial and the numerator will be mth order polynomial as a function of s. So this is an, an expression that used for any order of differential equations. And keep in mind that this is a dual property, which means that if you have the differential equation, you can get the transfer function, or if you have the transfer function, you can also obtain or get the differential equation. The second method to obtain the transfer function is to evaluate the transfer function directly from the impulse response. So we know that h of s is basically the Laplace transform of h of t. Also, we know that the impulse response h of t it is the inverse of the Laplace transform of the transfer function h of s. So let us have example to show you how we can obtain the transfer function from the impulse response. So in this example, let's say that we have h of t will equal to 3 times e to the minus 5t u of t. And what we need to do is we need to evaluate the transfer function of the system. Basically, the transfer function is the Laplace transform of the impulse response h of t. Then, this is a very simple signal. So, we can say that the transfer function here, h of s, will equal to 3 over s plus 5. So, a very simple example. If you have the impulse response, get the Laplace transform of that, you get the transfer function. We can also evaluate the impulse response from the transfer function. Let's show you that through numerical example. Let's assume that the transfer function h of s is given as 2 over s plus 1 over s plus 2. We can easily obtain the impulse response. Basically, take the Laplace inverse of this function. When we take the inverse of 2 over s, that becomes 2 times u of t, where u of t here is the unit step function plus the inverse of 1 over s plus 2 is basically e to the minus 2t u of t. The third method to evaluate the transfer function is directly from the input and the output signals, which comes straightforward from the definition. So let's show you that through example, and let's assume that the input signal x of t equals u of t, and the output signal, y of t, is equal to 2u of t minus 2 times e to the minus 2t u of t. Then, we can take the Laplace transform of x of t, that is x of s, which equals to 1 over s. And we can also take the Laplace transform of y of t, and that is y of s equals to 2 over s minus 2 2 over s plus 2. Now, when you combine the two terms together, this will equal to 4 over s squared plus 2s. From the definition, we can evaluate the transfer function. We know that h of s, the transfer function, is the ratio of the output signal, y of s, over the input signal, x of s, in the s domain. And when you do that, this will equal to 4 over s plus 2. Get the Laplace transform of the output signal and the input signal and get the ratio of those and that will give you the transfer function. Once you know the transfer function, you can easily obtain the impulse response of the system, which is the inverse of the transfer function, 
and we can say that the impulse response h of t is equal to 4 times e to the minus 2 t u of t. Also, from the transfer function, we can obtain the differential equation, and the differential equation of the system will be the output derivative terms will be the denominator, and the input derivative terms will be the numerator. So the output terms will be dy dt plus 2 times y of t. Keep in mind that those are the terms that come in from the denominator, and that will equal to 4 times x of t, which is the numerator term. So, in summary, we were able to obtain the transfer function from the differential equation or from the impulse response or by measuring the input and the output signals in the time domain, convert them to the Laplace domain and obtain the transfer function from the definition. Once the transfer function is known or if we know the transfer function, we can obtain the impulse response and the differential equation that describes the relationship between the input and the output of the system.